five years. Ioana Romiliotis has drilled deeper into the new data. It's a complex picture of a deep love for Canada and for some fears about their place in it. <laughs> A lot of verbal stuff, or they get stared down, or you know, they say they go back to their own country. That stuff happens all the time. All the time. My ladies, front. That front is their reality. Back it up, back it up, back it up. Back and it every up. Sunday, they learn to fight it. So, sisters, use that footwork. Every shuffle, every step, a way to dodge the dangers. Okay, forward again, hands up, hands up. That can come with being young and being Muslim. Okay, go. Okay, good. Relax, relax. Honestly, they just want to know that they can handle themselves if they're ever put in that sort of situation. <coughs> just like that. Again. Fatima Garcia started Sister Fit Ten. a year ago. Go. A one-two punch, she says, helps empower women, especially visibly devout women. Catch it at the end of your at the end of your range. Who like Sanjita Konkar often feel like a target. Good. Well, being a safety, you know, I know that I can travel safely during the night because I know some basic most of them myself, right? Yeah. But, you know, I can go through your subway station. Still, not, I don't feel scared. Yeah. Two, three, good. Mariam Noser never expected to be cast as an outsider. After all, she was born and raised in Toronto a proud Canadian and a proud Muslim who had just started wearing her hijab when it happened. So the first incident happened almost two years ago. I was on the subway going to university for a meeting and I was around St. George Station when I noticed this woman uh, was looking at me very strangely. Mariam says the same woman soon started hurling insults. She said you should go home, uh, you're not Canadian. What was going through my mind was basically, uh, how, am I safe now? It's just sudden, sudden thoughts because it was very fast for me. And then I didn't react to her at all. And when I was approaching Glory Young Station, she started spitting at my hijab and I could feel wetness on my neck. And it was horrible, honestly. And uh, luckily the doors opened right at Glory Young and I got to bolt out um, before further harm was done to me. And uh, scared? Very scared. I didn't tell anybody actually for a couple of days. I uh, was way too scared. I just pretended that nothing happened. Mariam was so rattled. She stopped wearing her hijab for several months. A couple of months after she put it back on, she was on the subway with friends when a man started yelling. This man screaming terrorists, these terrorists on the subway. And then he came up closer to me. So imagine I'm sitting in this type of scenario and I'm on this seat actually. And he came closer to me and said, if I had a gun, I'd shoot you all in the head. So he threatened us. So it was very, very scary. Scary and not an isolated story. A new survey finds 48% of young Muslims with a strong religious identity report they've faced discrimination. Most of them are women. Have you had situations where you've been sort of felt kind of not safe? Andrea Nemton commissioned the deeper study on younger Muslims for the In Spirit Foundation. The group promotes multiculturalism by funding pilot projects like this one. We actually address Islamophobia at school. That conversation is, is yeah. so critical. Sure. A workshop to help people fight back against Islamophobia. It is such an overwhelming feeling that you don't know how to progress. The first step is staying safe. It is about saying, what can I do next? I think it's essential that we create the frameworks and toolkits to be able to deal with interpersonal instances. Uh, to be able to stay safe, to be able to ask for help. Uh, and that's really a way to deal with, it's almost like a triage. You know, we need to arm ourselves with the actual crisis at hand. Community leaders say Islamophobic incidents in Canada tend to flare after terror attacks. And while they don't just happen to a younger generation, Young Muslims, many born here, have developed a strong Canadian identity, and with it, the strong expectation to live freely and safely. It's what inspired a group of 20-something university students to do this, to record a leap of faith that soon went viral. Mustafa Mali was the one in the blindfold. He admits he was kind of nervous. His friends Yunz Mohammed and Maz Khan were filming. 
But I was really expecting is either a negative response or a neutral one, like no one would help me. I would just be standing there 15, 20 minutes and like people would just pass me by. Their social experiment had a simple objective. It's a small fraction of people that, um, you know, attack um, a Muslim wearing a hijab or, or name call an imam for the way he's dressed. But that small fraction, it shows that there's still uh, some sort of ignorance in, 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 in how people in how people live. And we just want to show the people that, hey, look, Muslims are just regular people. We're Canadian. And people, they, for some reason, they don't understand that. According to the survey, that sense of pride in being Canadian is common among young Muslims. In fact, 90% of young Muslims report a strong sense of belonging in Canada. Maz, Mustafa and Yunus have done more social experiments since. But the hugging one was the first eye-opener. I was expecting someone to scream or shout at him, you know, like a racial slur, um, go back to your country, what are you doing here? But the fact that that didn't happen and the fact that most people are just human, you know, it's just that, that aspect of humanity is naturally in everyone. Mariam could have taken her hijab off again after the second incident. She thought about it, but decided her faith was stronger than her fear. I decided to put it back on because I don't want these instances to question my values and question how I deal with myself on an everyday basis and how I am proud to be a Muslim woman, a uh, Muslim woman born in Canada. So. Your hands up, hands up, hands up. Good job. Being Muslim, being Canadian. For many, it is a space they are still defining and sometimes still defending. Let's go, my superstar. Joanna Vermiliotis, CBC News, Toronto. Oh, good. The survey also shows Canadian Muslims are becoming more connected to both their faith and their country. But it also highlights the challenges they face. Two-thirds say they are worried about the media's portrayal of Muslims. Sixty-two percent are worried about discrimination. And a third fear the next generation will face more of it. We've still got lots still ahead tonight. I think the regulators and the government um, are ignoring us. Is hydraulic fracking causing earthquakes? Briar Stewart is in Oklahoma. And the bond between brothers that will touch your heart. Those stories and more coming up on The National. Time to check the day's business numbers. The TSX gained 78 points. The loonie rose very slightly. In New York, the Dow added 51 points. And the price of oil climbed $1.29 a barrel. You make me sick. Why would you want to marry such a rattled old witch? The drama never stops on Corey, but it can't move during hockey playoffs. Go to our Facebook page to find out when. Oh, you've done it. Yep, we've moved Coronation Street during the playoffs.